Hi, this is Coach Mark. I'm here on the South Side, and I wanted to go over some info with Catherine Vargas, Director of City Parks. Had a meeting after Labor Day with Jake Wheatley, and um, I didn't feel it was that productive. I understood that there was good desire from the city to do things, but uh, maybe I wasn't that well-versed in the history of what I have done. I had the impression that we should crawl before we walk, before we run. And frankly, our kids can't wait around while we plant seeds. And we've already done a lot of the legwork and heavy lifting. So hopefully this can better describe some of the past activities. Now, I've known Catherine since she's had a job two, three, four jobs ago. So we have some history, but she doesn't always... Um, understand some of the assets that I'm able to bring to the table and hopefully this will help. So I've been there with my city in a number of different ways. And um, we do master's water polo. We do master's water polo. We've been doing that at Ammon on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m for nearly 15 years. We even hosted an NCAA water polo tournament at Highland Park Pool with um, WNJ College. I've worked with Summer Dreamers and in that capacity really um, did well with um, City Parks. We swam at Homewood. That pool was closed this year. Sue Murray, Ammon, Highland Park, Riverview, Moore, Phillips, Sheridan. And a lot of times... <laughs> And a lot of times we would swim in this PPS pools, but then often we worked with the pools at Summer Dreamers, uh, hosted lifeguard games where we played squim at Island Park Pool. Um, we also worked a couple times on special events at the Oliver Bath House where we trained lifeguard people. And it was always great to have um, Shelley's and the department's support. Um, and I've coached many athletes who have gone on to work for Pittsburgh, sometimes when they're in high school, but even now, post high school as young adults, um, Jan and Tobias and dozens of lifeguards and many of our ex-Summer Dreamers too had grown up to become City Park lifeguards. I see them on the job at the different pools. Now I have a number of available assets. Um, Squim is one popular game. Plus, there's a swim curriculum out of Canada. You can swim. And then I'm also working with the United, the International Swim Coaches Association. And they host meets. And there's a whole section here about the I-League proposal, which I think has some good implications for city parks and um, ongoing in, interactions in the region. Another available asset is LAP.RED. It's a CRM tool. It's a tech tool that I want to be able to provide to people in the aquatics department, if not city parks. And then there's a valuable assets of mental skills for young athletes. It's a course and also um, auto coach. It's out of Australia, a timing system so that we can host um, events and races and such and have it um, scoreboard ready. Now, I've also got some common ground community things. I've been a broadcaster with the WPIL swim meets, and I've been a coach with WPIL around at different places. On the county park front, I do Sunday water polos at Settler's Cabin, and I've done some special events also at North Park with playing swim. I've not this summer, but the prior summers, I worked at Montero Heights Country Club, and um, I've worked with the country club league that's around Western Pennsylvania. And pre-pandemic, 
right before the pandemic started, well, we hosted this um, thing with Rick Flanagan, and we got all the um, aquatic people together in one room up in the Hill District. It was a fabulous meeting, and then that bang, the pandemic hit. Um, I also use um, some PPS pools in the winter, all of our high school. For the last year, playing water polo, this year we're using PCA Greenway, and we're doing underwater hockey. And um, in the past, we've done the Saturday swim schools, often at Allegheny over on the north side. Politically, I've been involved as well. I've been a ballot candidate. I've run for various years, especially when my kids were small. It was like 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, when mayor, controller, city council, state senate, I've helped people get on the ballots for governor and such. But um, I also worked with Pittsburgh Public Schools Athletic Reform Task Force. Superintendent Roosevelt started it. And I, I insisted then that Director Ashley, Dwayne Ashley, be included in that task force. Um, in our efforts there, we've moved our swim teams then at PPS into the WPIL and got out of the city league. But sadly, there's been a backtracking of that. And Linda Lane terminated that athletic reform task force. But I think that's an important piece that needs to be reestablished now. And I know citizens have an alternative out there. And then my position paper that was released back in the days of Linda Lane has been credited for saving many city sports. It's a, called Alternatives to Fewer Sports, and there's a link. Um, I worked with APOS, United Way, also trying to get sports integrated into more of the after school activities to various um, effects. And I've also been trying to approach Ed Ganey since his nomination back when um, he won the primary. So this is another area where there's a lot of um, common ground with the north side and the Pittsburgh project in Fowler Park. I managed that pool the last years it was open. I did a lot of work with the campers and the lessons, and we played a lot of game plays. And uh, I have experiences with the youth jobs program. I was a recruiter and worked hard in the springs, going to the various high schools with partners for work, trying to get kids to apply. And believe it or not, I was the first to hire learn and earn workers to work at the pools. This I-League proposal is something that I think is going to be of interest. It's all documented online at ISCA.blue I-League, but it's a scholastic swim expansion program where we do water polo and swim, but also there's a tenant of that. It's a principle of the lifeguard training. And this is a way to address swimming experiences at schools that do not have viable, robust swim teams, which includes Westinghouse and Perry and perhaps SciTech and UPrep. Now, some of those schools are going to be gone. I think UPrep Kappa is definitely part of it. And the city could have a big role inside the I-League. But then when you go beyond the city, it um, opens up other things like Stowe Rocks or East Allegheny and such, where the city could play a driving force in the I-League. And then as a coach, I've coached it. Ellis School since 2017, before that, and a little bit of overlap, but Shenley and Pittsburgh, um, Obama, the varsity swim team, we won a WPIL section, first ever city team to do that. We set a WPIL record with one of our athletes, first ever that happened, that happened. And when I was a coach with the City League, our kids went to the state championships every single year. Um, since then, not so much. Um I also coached uh, and organized with Pittsburgh Combined, a scholastic water polo teams. We took teams with city kids to the Ohio Cup in, in Columbus, as well as to Toledo St. Francis. And we played against North Allegheny and entered a number of tournaments over the years. And I started even our elementary swim team here at the Phillips um, School, where my kids went to school. So uh, there are plenty of areas where we've been active inside the city with various school parks, public spaces. And now let's talk about the next steps. Okay. There are a few things I want to share about myself. You can always reach me at mark at 
And these are my overarching principles. I think city parks and especially myself, it's all about playing well with others. Stress th three different things about playing well with others. A coaching friend says there are three words that are important. And these words are compete, compete, compete. And play in our sports world is about competition. We're not going to energize people with nature walks or serenity lap swimming or kayaking to look at the birds. You know, we're not going to be able to get the city excited with sponsorships, you know, for fishing. You know, those are awesome recreational things, but when it comes to youth and sports, you know, they have a thing on their minds about college scholarships, and that's something that we lack on. And we need to approach the matter of youth violence. <coughs> Excuse me. And we need to approach the matter of youth violence. You know, and that's about teaching respect and how to get people to perform under pressure. Literacy is very important to me. I've published books in the past, and it's often um, about literacy and technology. You know, and I'm here to create an impact. You know, I don't want to pussyfoot around on the outside of things. I don't want to do rinky think things. And I have have a CLOH.org mentality where we should be striving to create literate Olympians here. You're not an Olympian unless you strive to do that. You don't back into going to the Olympics. But CLOH is about creating a community learning outreach hub. And it's a way for us to express the notion that people should come live over here, here being Pittsburgh. And I do this in a caring, loving, open, and honest way. So those CLOH principles are important. And I'm a prudent type. I don't like to spend money. But Playing with our children is not an expensive endeavor. So we really need to lean upon volunteers. And when you do that, there's a cycle of life that then opens up so that the older kids are teaching the younger kids. And with the leadership, then we need to spend extra time teaching the teachers. So this cycle of life with adults to kids to younger kids is very important. When we did Summer Dreamers, our varsity swimmers were phenomenal teachers of the middle school and elementary kids. Much better than the professional hired teachers. And everybody needs to learn how to swim and needs to swim. You know, it's a year-round achievers. You know, especially in the summertime when we have the kids out of school, it's hot, we want to put them in the pool, and we want swimming to happen. But it also has to happen on the holidays and the weekends. So it's a year-long thing with being an athlete. There's no off-season. And I don't like the way the scholastic season starts and stops, especially in Pittsburgh public schools where there's no year-round conditioning. And it's really a lifespan. And um, it's a lifestyle. So... Let me be clear about this, too. I'm not bucking for a job. I don't want you to hire me. You know, rather, I'm about this sweat equity and um, giving of myself. You know, but there are going to be expenses. And there's going to be some value. And costs must be covered. Now, meanwhile, I'll be doing this um, with some factory direct pricing. There's a, it's cheaper than you'll ever find anywhere else. And um, we do have a lot of gratis, or what I say, free elements. But we have to expect the participants to pay some user fees. Now, we can sponsor some of these people or scholarship some of these people. been using sponsorships. I'm not looking for a job, and I'm not looking for big handouts, but I'm not looking to um, make expenses either. Here are the problems. I call them the fumbles. And these all need to be addressed. First off, the city has not been offering swim lessons. They've been missing for years. Furthermore, there have been no swim teams in any of the city park pools. There's no city swimming championships. Lastly, of course, the Oliver Bathhouse has been closed and closed for a long time. 
Now, there are other fumbles that are missing and it's not always the blame to the city parks by all means. But there are a lack of capable swimmers to become lifeguards. We're not teaching our kids how to swim. There are no more swimming with Pittsburgh Public School Summer Dreamers. So those kids aren't going through the system and then wanting to go to the pool and have fun and know that's a great place to work. Liberty Mile Runners. We used to have hundreds of kids run the race. There's no sports reform with our schools. The DPR swim team is long gone. There used to be a time when there was a swim team at the Oliver Bathhouse sponsored by the city. And lastly, the Fowler Pool over on the north side where I was the manager has been closed. We need to open that up and all of these things get addressed in the next steps. Now let's get to the worthy solutions that I want to pitch to you and get acceptance on. First off, we can build upon our water polo tournaments. The Masters. The Masters would like to play other cities, and when the Masters play, it becomes, let's say, they play in Cleveland or Cincinnati or W and J or Penn State. We can make these events where the fans can come out and cheer and watch, and we can also include some junior water polo games. But the kids need to be able to see the thing so that they can then do it. So water polo tournaments would be really nice. The other thing is to build upon SQUIM. Let's get every city park pool having their own little house league for SQUIM. And then we can do citywide squim games, perhaps using Ammon on Monday and Wednesday nights or occasionally at Highland Park Pool or another bigger pool. And then we can also relaunch the city championships for both competitive swimming as well as squim games. And then we want to do an all-city sports camp. So a concept I call S6, which is a sports, spirit and soul, song and story summit, is a sports lecture series. It's sort of like a TED Talk, but instead of talking about technology and design, we're going to talk about sports participation and wellness and health and sports. And they'll have spotlight events as well as roundtable planning events, sort of like sports and society issues. Um, and then it's also an opportunity to talk a, about literacy, and it can be a money maker, and it's going to really benefit a lot of the sponsors. As well, this All City Sports Camp becomes a remake of Summer Dreamers, but instead of just being in the summer, it's a year round achievers. It's a new type of pool tag that we can sell and create some income. But instead of just giving um, open swim away, we're going to charge a little bit more for those um, athletes. So I want to institute a new pool tag layover for athletes. And this would probably need city council approval. So let's get it started. And then we'll also have the I-League sort of as a part of this growing all-city or county sports camp. And then we'll engage with the WPIL and the City League and all the principals, including those that like charter schools and places like the Ellis School and such. And to keep all this in, together, we're going to need to have a, a tech tool. And I have that with lap.red. It's a um, an opportunity to have a CRM, a client relationship manager, and I'll use this with regards to... Um, city parks and we can chart and um, follow along our lifeguards and be able to outreach with text and all our sponsorships and stuff and this would be something that um, could be done at the director's level as well as um, uh, the pool level and then I want to really build upon Pittsburgh Public Schools cooperation you know especially at the pool so we're gonna have to approach the athletic director, Karen Arnold, as well as Dr. Walters at Pittsburgh Public Schools and the board and their facilities. And by all means, this is a spark now where we can have real firm things to go to the mayor and say, hey, 
we want you to be aware of what's going to happen with regards to our pool expansion, especially in the light of the closed Oliver Bathhouse. And then with that, the Learn to Swim instructors, we need to adopt the You Can Swim curriculum. We'll provide it for you at no charge. And the winter training needs to start soon. And actually, a lot of it is blended learning and happens online. But we can use our times that we already got available with regard to the um, one night a week swimming in Pittsburgh Public Schools. And um, lastly, we got to open up the door with regards to partnerships with UPMC and Dollar Bank, the marathon, of course, so that we're having a presence at all the expos and races. And we're talking again to get our kids involved in the Liberty Mile and the 10 mile races and such. And then the iLeague is a big sponsorship um, partnership where we should be talking with the Thelma Lovett Y and the Kingsley Center and people like the JCC and Pitt. So if we can do these points, there's seven of them, do more water polo tournaments, intergenerational gameplay, get that all city sports camp using a tech tool with client relationship manager, get serious cooperation established with Pittsburgh Public Schools, enhance our learn to swim instructors with a, a viable curriculum that's way better than what the Red Cross does. And then we can open the door on partnerships. All this starts to um, blend together to make for some exciting things for the future for our kids in our city. Thanks for the consideration.